Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Tony with Lalita Loco. Okay, I'm back with another one take Tony. Uh, I'm going to try to do this without any cuts, without any edits, and uh, it's a little ranty today. So if you're not into a ranty video, I appreciate that. But I want to talk about the challenges for people with mobility on a cruise ship. And I'm just going to share a couple stories with you. The background is this. Jenny and I went on the Carnival Sunrise last week. We found out uh, really close to our cruise that Jenny's mom and stepdad Frank were going to go on the cruise with us. Jenny's mom has bad knees. And so we rented a scooter so that she could uh, have a scooter on the cruise ship. Uh, pretty easy process renting the scooter. They had it there ready for outside the terminal. We rode the scooter onto the cruise ship and uh, all the doors are wide enough for the scooter, all those kind of things. So no issues there. It really blows my mind that the challenge for people with mobility uh, on a cruise ship is not necessarily the physical aspects of the cruise ship. It's the people. And just a simple story to, to illustrate that, it's that embarkation day elevator. Now, on the Carnival Vista, on the embarkation day, the main elevator banks had a dedicated elevator for people with mobility issues. The, the Sunrise didn't. And so we hit the elevator banks on the Sunrise with the scooter along with, you know, 50 or 60 other people that had just gotten on the cruise ship. And it was a madhouse of everybody waiting for an elevator either to go up to lunch or to go up to their room. And there was no dedicated elevator for mobility issues. There was uh, crew members there kind of staffing that area where everybody was. But all they were basically doing was saying, oh, if you want to go to lunch, go to nine. That was it. And so when we first got there, we asked them, we said, hey, look, we have mobility issues. You know, my mother-in-law is in a scooter. Is there a dedicated elevator? No, this is an older ship. We're not like the newer ships. We don't have any dedicated elevators for mobility so basically, it was like Lord of the Flies. You just had to jump in there and try to get on an elevator. And I'm sure you've seen this. This is not, we've talked about it in the elevator etiquette video, but the, the reality is this. You cannot maneuver a scooter onto an elevator as quickly as you can just walk onto an elevator. So you have 50 people waiting for an elevator and one or two people are in scooters. Anytime the elevator door opened up, there was no way to get the scooter to the elevator quicker than people could pile onto the elevator. And nobody cared. That is the other thing, and I'm sure I'm guilty of it also, of having no situational awareness at all, of not realizing that there was somebody that, uh, that couldn't walk, that needed to use the elevator, and just completely ignoring them. Because it happened for 25 minutes at that elevator bank. Every time the door would open, we'd start to move the scooter toward the elevator. It would fill up with people. Nobody would make eye contact. The, it was super frustrating. It was very disappointing. And it made me think about myself. Am I one of those people that don't have situational awareness? I really try to have situational awareness, especially with people with mobility issues, but maybe I, I don't. And I, I met a whole bunch of people in that elevator bank that did not. So it took us about 25 minutes to get up to, uh, just to get onto an elevator to get to the next area of our cruise. And I wish I could say it was only because it was embarkation day. I wish I could say that that was not the case throughout the whole cruise. And what's weird is somebody, as somebody who was accompanying somebody with mobility issues, uh, you start to get, you know, you start to come up with a plan. How are we going to get the scooter on the elevator uh, without people bum rushing the elevator? And so, you know, we would come up with processes where like one person would flank one side, one person would flank the other side. It's almost like we were, you know, offensive linemen in football, making sure we block everybody out. Uh, you start to be really vocal. Hey, let's get this scooter on the elevator. We're going to get on this elevator if we can just get the scooter. You know, that way you're giving people audio clues that please don't bum rush the elevator. And it was like that all week long. So just being, uh, you know, and we would do things like just get them on the elevator and then I would take the stairs, especially if it was like one or two flights up or one or two flights down. I would get them loaded on the elevator and then I would go take the stairs. I couldn't imagine being the person confined to the scooter or being confined to a wheelchair and watching all these people just not care. Um, and it's, you know, it happens. I, I get it. You know, people are trained to worry about their own deal and you really have to work to care about people that are not in your immediate sphere. But look, on the cruise ship, everybody is now kind of in your family. Everybody is in your community. You're locked in a cruise ship 
And there is a communal aspect to it that where there's some give and take where you've got needs, I've got needs, and we have to strike the balance because your needs are not going to win out over my needs. We're all in this space together. And the fact that people just blow by people with mobility issues, it's mind numbing. Able body people just blowing by people with here's here's the final example that I'll give on debarkation day uh, it was the same process for us except we were self uh, assist on our luggage we were carrying our own luggage off and so we had the scooter we had all four of us and we had about six pieces of luggage and so I was kind of in charge of the luggage but we still had to get uh, my mother-in-law onto the elevator. So it was the same process. Everybody bum rushes the elevator, but we got, we've got some skills at this point. We knew how to flank off the elevator and get Emily on the elevator. And I'm like, I'll worry about getting the luggage down on the next elevator. So we got all them down. And so while I was there waiting on the next elevator, there was a lady in a scooter whose family had gone on before her. They didn't actually do this process of getting her on the elevator. And, uh, she, she waited, you know, she was like, I cannot get on one of these elevators. And the frustration was so uh, key there that finally she got some help. She got on the elevator, but man, she was distraught. I mean, it was elevator after elevator where she got ran by for people just trying to get off of the cruise ship. Nobody, nobody tried to get her on an elevator. And so at some point I was trying to like help this lady get on an elevator and I don't even know why her family left her, but um, I don't know. I'm just so here's the appeal part of it. That's the story. I hope that's painted enough of a picture to make at least you think a little bit about if you see somebody in a wheelchair, if you see somebody in a scooter, if you see somebody that can't walk, uh, make way, help them out, do something. Don't just run by the person like you don't care. So that that is my appeal when we're in this look, everybody's kind of selfish anyways, right? Like you have to elevate yourself not to be selfish, but man, uh, look, look out for people on the cruise ship. Everybody is in different places in their life. Everybody's just trying to have a little vacation. They're trying to relax. They're trying to have a little bit of fun. Uh, it reminds me that when my father was sick with uh, cancer, he, uh, he traveled to Cancun and uh, he really couldn't travel anymore because he was so sick, but he just wanted to have a little bit of vacation uh, as, as his life was uh, coming to an end. And uh, so you don't know what situation people are in. And uh, a little kindness goes a long way. It's hard for people with mobility issues on cruise ships because of the people. Don't be one of those people that make it hard. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, this is Tony from Lolita Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.